Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now this soap is my first Halloween soap. I'm making a couple of them this year and they're going to be available in the shop in the September shop update. Now for my Halloween soap I wanted to do a black cat wearing a witch's hat sitting on a pumpkin. <laughs> so that's what I did. Now it did involve again making my own mould so I could get the embeds made so it was quite a performance to get through everything but it was a lot of fun and I am really happy with the result. Come on, let's go and make some soap. So for this soap, when I designed it, I decided I wanted to do a cat wearing a witch's hat and sitting on a pumpkin. So I've made myself an embed mould to make the cat. Now with this cat, I'm going to have to make the embed without the tail and add the tail on later because that tail is just going to be too delicate to actually do in a mould. I'm also constructing this mould as sort of like a column mould rather than a flat embed and that's because I think that's going to be the best way that I can have a reasonable chance of getting it out intact without breaking any of those delicate bits of the hat off. Because of how intricate this mould is, I'm actually making it in two parts. So I'm going to have two of these embed moulds and that's just so I don't have to try and unmould a sort of 30 centimetre long embed without breaking any of it. So I've got my witchy cat safely cocooned in a foam board box, making sure there's absolutely no leaks. And then I'm just filling up both of those little moulds with some silicone. That will take about a couple of hours to go off with the silicone that I use and then I'll be ready to make my embeds. Once everything's all set up, I've then got my silicone moulds and as you can see here, a bit like if you've seen my stone soaps, I've put the silicone moulds back in their cases and that's because I've split the moulds. There's no way I'm going to get these cats out by just pushing them out of the mould. So I've actually done a split along the base and then popped them back inside those foam boxes and stuck some tape around them just to seal them back up again. Now I want my cat to be completely black including the witch's hat so this is just going to be nice and straightforward just mixing up the right amount of batter, adding some activated charcoal and then just pouring into those cat moulds. The fragrance oil I'm using is Dragon's Blood from Nature's Garden. Now this is a fragrance oil that does discolour but there's not really much of an effect of that in this soap because it's quite dark. But in the soap that I'm doing next I do talk about discolouring fragrance oils and how I cope with that and also how I test them. Once the embeds have been poured, I'll then just leave them to set up for a day before unmoulding them. So here we are the next day, ready to unmould, and I thought I'd better do this on camera because I know some of you would want to see um, whether this is a complete disaster coming out of the mould or not. And actually it worked really well. I had no leakage around the join area that I'd done and being able to bend and split that silicone apart really helped get that cat out pretty cleanly. So, phew, a big sigh of relief there. I've got my two halves of my embed mould. So next I'm going to be moving on to my pumpkin and I definitely want to have the cut out face in my pumpkin. 
<laughs> so look at me with my new thing. This is like a jumbo extruder. Um, it's actually a sort of proper clay extruder that people use for extruding like the handles for mugs and things like that. And I thought, well, sometimes when you extrude things, they're tiny weeny small, which is great in certain circumstances. But sometimes you want to extrude things that are a little bit bigger. I've made a jack-o'-lantern cut-out face extruder disc and got quite a big old wadge of yellow soap dough because it takes quite a lot in here. It's kind of like sort of the size of, you know, those sort of silicone sealant things you get for piping around your bath, that sort of thing. Now, I haven't actually used this yet, so we're going to see how it goes. Ha! Look at that! That's working really well. I really like that. So I've got a big old pile of jack-o'-lantern face parts, so I'm just going to spend a little bit of time of straightening them all out and sort of cutting them to a more manageable size. So on to the rest of the pumpkin, and I'm sure it's going to come as no surprise that we're doing orange. Now, I would love to put an orange mica up on the screen, but I'm sure a lot of you are familiar by now. I'm in the UK. I don't have an orange in my assessment, so therefore I've had to make the orange up out of the colours I do have available for me in my assessment. So I've used a combination of neon pink, purple and some neon yellow to get my orange. I'm using Dragon's Blood fragrance oil in this soap. I can't remember if I've told you that already. It does discolour but I've tested this orange and it's perfectly fine with the fragrance. It does accelerate the batter a little bit so therefore I'm going to be mixing up a little bit of batter for the pumpkin and adding the fragrance oil and pouring that layer and then bringing in the embeds and then pouring in a little bit more until I've built my pumpkin. So the pumpkins were left to set up overnight and then I moulded the next day. And I'm now going to start working on the cat's tail. So I've rolled out some black soap dough to the width I need for the tail and I'm just going to now fit it to the top of the pumpkin and then I'll fit the cat on top of the tail. When I'm happy that it's all aligned nicely I'm going to glue it on by just painting it with some distilled water. And then I'm going to make sure that I really press it firmly to the outside of the pumpkin because I don't want there to be any air gaps when you go through and cut the soap. And then to help this, I'm just going to wrap it in some film to hold everything tightly together whilst it sticks itself. So whilst I'm mucking around with soap dough, I'm just going to make the bat that I want inside the soap and for the little embeds on the top. So I've got a little miniature bat extruder disc 
I'm sure you know by now, but if you want your own miniature bats, these discs are available in the shop. And I'm just going to extrude some black soap dough and let that start to set up a little bit whilst I finish the rest of the soap. And then for the cat, just sticking it on with some distilled water is not going to be good enough. So I've made up some black soap and I'm just popping this on the top of the pumpkin. And what this should do is give me a nice solid base for my cat. And also make sure that the join between the cat and the tail is done really well. Once I'm happy that everything's joined nicely, I'll then let that sit up for a few hours just to make sure it's really connected well before I put it into the soap. So let's put everything together and make the rest of the soap. Now I've reduced the amount of oils that I need here by working out the amount of oil in my embed and taking it away from my normal batch. I'm just going to bring everything up to emulsion. And then I'll split my colours out. Now I mainly want to have a purple background around the cat but I want some sort of orange streaky bits coming in from the top of the sky. So this is the orange I'm just separating off. I also want to have a little bit of black at the bottom just to sort of seat that pumpkin. Now I'm putting my black into a squeeze bottle just because it's a very narrow gap down the side of that cat embed so I'm just going to use a long tube on my squeeze bottle to make sure I can get right down in there. And then the rest of my batter is going to be a nice purple. I'm continuing to use dragon blood from nature's garden throughout the whole soap so I'm just adding that to the various portions. And once everything's mixed in we're ready to start our pour. Now my batter isn't quite at the right trace yet so I don't want to pour it whilst it's really fluid because it'll just all muddle together. So whilst I'm waiting for it to set up a little bit, I'm just going to take this opportunity to get one of those extruded rows of bats and chop them up into little mini embeds to go on the top of the soap. So to start the pour, I'm just going to use the squeeze bottle with a pipette stuck on the end so I can get right down in that really tight gap between the cat and the side of the mould. And I'm just squirting in a little base of black along the bottom of the pumpkin. And then I'll just finish off the pour by starting with some purple and then I'm going to gradually introduce some orange into the scheme towards the top of the soap and bring that bat in just before I reach the top.
we'll just finish off the top of the soap by adding all those teeny weeny little bats. So there's our finished soap. I'm going to leave mine for at least 24 hours. That's pretty standard for me and cut it the next day. So here we are the next day and I must admit I was a bit nervous for this cut. It was a lot of work and I didn't want it to be all wonky inside. Haha, -ha, excellent. Everything stayed where I wanted it to. I do really like these and I'm so pleased that what I planned actually came through in the soap. Most of these bars should be pretty well the same so we'll just cut through a few more and then I'll leave you with some final pictures. These soaps will be available in the shop in the September update. That's September the 15th if you want to grab yourself a bar. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them below in the comments section and I will get back to you. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!